I'm Joe Sanders. I'm one of the volunteer leaders at the Lynn Haven campus. And we're kicking this thing off online. But in order to do that, you got to know what's going on, what we're doing. So we actually have some announcements. Some gravity announcements coming to you over the world wide web. That thing, you know where it is. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we know that this is really odd time that we're living in right now. But we wanted to make sure that you understood the party does not stop. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. We are going to keep this thing going, and, and this is how we're going to do it. We are recording this we're, on a Monday we're, evening. We're here. Like, you're, right. you're watching this. Yeah. And you're going to be able to watch this through multiple forms of social media to be able to get the same great information that we provide on Wednesday nights and hopefully have the same amount of fun. Because that's, that's really what it's kind of all about. True. But for you to know how you're going to get this information, we need you to stay in tight communication with your small group leaders. They are getting uh, the most recent, most up-to-date information from Matt, from the church, all the time. And they are going to be communicating that with you. And they're going to come up with ways to keep us all engaged while we're going through this self-quarantine, whatever you want to call this, COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. But you got to be in touch with them in order to do that. So stay in touch with your small group leaders. They're going to get creative. They're going to find ways to keep us all involved and all connected. Now to the parents, okay, we also want you to stay as connected as possible. So we want to make sure you're checking your emails because the church is going to be sending out random emails throughout the week because things are changing. But that's the good thing about life. All the time. When life changes, changing. it happens. It's right. It's normal for us. So right. stay on top of your emails. You will be getting all the updates from there. It is important that you read every detail that goes into the emails as well, just because there's certain guidelines that we have to stick to as well. So that's right. And we, we are so appreciative of the partnership that we oh, yes. have with you oh, yes. in, in ministering to your children. So please stay in touch and feel free to reach out to your kids' small group leader or to Matt or to Zeke if you have any questions about anything. We're here to provide that information and to minister to your kids. We're here. Now, this has all been good and whatnot, but you know why we're really here. It's time after, but, okay, the part doesn't stop. So we're actually gonna play a game with you guys. We are gonna play a game. It's a fun one, trust me, you, you don't wanna miss out on this. So, first of all, we need everyone who is at home, you need to go into your house and find either cookies, chips, or crackers, something flat that is edible, Okay, it can be candy too, but you're gonna get it. It does not have to be tag-alongs from Girl Scout cookies, but I'll give you an extra point if it is. Oh, good call. Yeah, yeah, keep up with this. All right, so what we need you to do is have someone record this for you. Okay, they're gonna record it, but what you're gonna do, you're gonna simply put the cookie on your forehead. I'm gonna time it for him, but also record it at the same time. But he has to get it into his mouth, eat it, and then I will stop the timer. And what you're gonna do after that is you're gonna post on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever you may have, tag us in it if you want to see what happened, and there will be a winner for sure. He's struggling right now. This yeah, is not this easy. This is exactly what's going to happen, all right? We're going to be recording it, so let's just say I'm recording it right now. Boom. This, is... oh. this will not be easy, okay? I'm not but eating one off the floor. We want you to do it. Yeah, it's not, this, this is insane. But he's going to get it at some point in time. We, we may run out of film, but... Hey, he's, he's going for it. We're dedicated at this moment, so let's, let's see what happens. Uh, Saved it. This okay. is not easy at all. Also, don't waste it. Don't waste it. If it falls on your floor at your house, you eat it. Okay? That's your right. home. You, know, you guys here know what happens on this you, stage of gravity. I ain't touching something off of it. Yeah. Oh, facts. We're going to give him one more chance. If, if not, uh, oh, I almost had it hit my tongue. I felt it. Be ready, though. This is, this is your <laughs> challenge, okay? We want everyone at home to jump in on this challenge. Again, it doesn't have to be a cookie. Chips, anything flat, crackers, anything flat that you can eat. Get it recorded, post it on Instagram, tag the Gravity uh, Norfolk, the Gravity Lynn Haven accounts so that we can see it, and we're going to announce a winner. Yeah, we're going to announce a winner. I don't know. We'll figure that we'll out. We'll figure that part You'll out. You'll know. You'll see it. But we will announce a winner yeah. every week, and we'll have more challenges like this for as long as this goes on. All right. Well, that's all we got. Peace. Stand 
What's up, Gravity? Uh, my name is Matt Love, and I'm the high school director here at the Lynn Haven campus, and we are going virtual. Y'all, we're here online, and we're super excited for this chance to innovate and, and to create and to do something different, to do Gravity differently than we've ever done it before. Now, granted, we, we do wish it was under um, different circumstances, but we're still grateful um, once again for this chance to do something differently and to meet you, uh, hopefully in the comfort of your own home safe and free from the coronavirus. Uh, now before we dive in here, we want you to know about the season we're in um, as a church. We want you to know that we want to be known as a church that is for the 757. Now that doesn't mean that we're a building that's for the 757, brick and mortar, four walls and a roof. Uh, we want to be known as people who are for the 757. So the fact that we're not meeting in buildings doesn't change any of that. In fact, that becomes all the more important. So what does that look like for you? Now more than ever, you need to be for others. We need to be for others. Maybe it means that you reach out to your local school and ask them uh, if they need uh, food supplies to help feed kids who are on free and reduced lunches. Uh, maybe it's listening to a friend who's super stressed out about um, all the stuff that's going on. Maybe their parents are going to lose their job and they just need somebody to listen to them and to care for them. Maybe it's going out and if you're blessed with uh, finances and you're able to still have money, it means you go out and support local businesses, uh, nonprofits, and you give uh, to your local church because uh, those places are going to hurt a lot during this next season. Whatever you do, here's what I want for you. I don't want you to look at these next few weeks um, in the future and say, I just watched Netflix or I, you know, played Call of Duty or whatever it is. I'm going to be doing some of those things myself. But at the end of the day, I want to look back on these next few weeks and said that I stood up and I helped, that I was for others and that I reached out. And I want the same for you too. So that's what I'll say about that. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to dive in. And listen, we don't want to overdo talking about this coronavirus stuff because we know that you're getting it in school, you're seeing it in the news all the time. Um, but here's the deal. This season that we're in as a human race is, um, is, a, is just f crazy in so many ways, but it highlights our need to talk about a few things. And so we're going to take a break from the curriculum that we planned and we're going to talk about a few things that are important for us to know as we go into these next few weeks. So today, we're going to talk about a big word. We're going to talk about God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. I know that's a, a big word, and you maybe have never heard that word before. So here's what it means. Sovereignty means this, that God has all power and control. No, sorry, God has all power and authority. In other words, that means that God simply is in control. God's in control. That's what it means to say that God is sovereign. Now, here's, I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know about you, but I hate flying. I absolutely hate flying. It's when I feel like I'm least in control of my surroundings, and I hate it. I didn't always hate flying. It was never my favorite thing, but I didn't always hate it. But about a year ago, I was on a flight that experienced, let me say, rougher than normal uh, turbulence. And it changed how I view flying ever since then. Ever since I, every, every time I go flying now, my anxiety skyrockets. Why? Because I had one moment where I realized that I was not in control of what happened to me. I was not in control. That ultimately, the, my fate and my safety rested in the hands of the pilot, uh, the people who built the plane, the people who inspect the plane, the people who are running the tarmac and making sure we can um, take off and land safely. My, my fate and my safety ultimately rests in everybody else's hands. I am not in control. Everyone else is in control except me. And here's the deal. When I can't control what I perceive to be a dangerous situation, not just flying, but in life, it puts me mentally in a really dark place. And oftentimes, that's how anxiety works, right? We don't feel like we're in control, so we don't feel safe. You know, maybe everything going on in our world right now has got your head spinning a little bit. You're confused. Maybe you're frustrated. At first, people were saying, hey, there's, there's nothing to worry about. This is just the flu. And we won't make comments on, you know, if that's true or not. But people kind of brushed it off initially. And then businesses started to shut down. 
Uh, you started to hear things about stock market crashes and all of those types of things, and now it's got you a little worried. Maybe your school just went to virtual learning, and that means you've got a ton of work to do, a ton of busy work, and you don't learn well in that environment, so you're stressed out about all the tasks that you have to do. Maybe you're a senior this year, and you're worried about your graduation being canceled, not being able to go to prom, and it's got you feeling anxious. Uh, maybe this pandemic that's hit our country has affected your family um, financially in some big ways. You know, I know for me personally, uh, this whole issue couldn't have come at a worse time. Um, I just became a dad, which is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, but all the cliches about parenthood are true. It's amazing, but it's also exhausting. It's stressful. Um, it's the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. And so that's the backdrop of everything that's going on in my life. But not only that, um, a family member who I'm really close to uh, and love and look up to um, just lost his job. Um, and I have other family members who work in the nonprofit world and um, their businesses are getting hit and they're worried about their jobs um, being lost. Uh, and then throw everything in that's going on in our world, and I, if I'm being honest with you guys, um, I'm not okay. I'm really not okay, and I want to be honest about that with you. I want to be vulnerable and say that there's been days uh, where my anxiety is just through the roof, through the roof. Much like flying, now in life, I don't feel like I have much control over what happens to me or those I love. And guys, it sucks. It sucks so much. But speaking of flying, let's go back to that for just a moment. A few months ago, I was uh, flying to go visit family down in Florida. My Grammy, uh, who I call her my Grammy because she's on my mom's side. I call my grandma on my dad's side grandma. It's this thing. But anyways, my Grammy uh, was coming to Florida to visit my mom, dad, and my sister. And I hadn't seen her in a while. And a few years actually, and so I surprised her by flying down to visit her. We'll actually have a picture of her reaction um, on the screen. You can see how excited she was uh, to see me. It's, it was pretty awesome. But anyways, I got on the plane at Norfolk Airport, and I sat down. And as I sat down, I put my seatbelt on, and I'm starting to realize as I'm putting the belt on over me so I can't move anywhere, I don't have control. And my heartbeat starts to beat a little faster, and my breath starts to get a little bit more shallow, and I start to move towards having this panic attack. And then this gentleman comes and sits down next to me. And anybody sitting next to you in a plane is never fun. Uh, but he was loud, and he was talking a lot, and uh, I was just kind of annoyed and, and frustrated. But I said, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for a distraction. So I start talking to him to distract myself, right? And turns out he's a pilot. He's a, actually a retired pilot. And so I start to open up to him about my anxiety about flying. And he starts to hear me and how worried and, and scared I was, honestly. And so we get up and into the air, and all of a sudden things start to get a little bit more bumpy than normal. And he turns to me and he says, oh, don't worry, that's just hot air hitting the bottom of the plane. We're safe. The pilots aren't surprised by that. A and then a few minutes later, the plane takes a little bit of a, a sharper turn, and then he turns to me and he says, oh, it's okay, that's just blah, blah, blah. The pilots aren't surprised. The, pi the pilots aren't worried about that. It's, it's totally normal. And you know, he, the more he starts to tell me what's going on and why it's going on, I start to calm down. He starts telling me how safe flying is, how trained the pilots are, even for emergency situations that will probably never happen, and my anxiety starts to subside. So when I fly now, is my anxiety completely gone? No, not at all. I still don't really like flying, but I do have more peace because I know that there are people who are in control of the situation who have my safety and my best interest as their top priority. And this is a lot like how we interact with God in life. He loves us, and He is totally sovereign. He's in complete control and totally 
um, sovereign over all of it. Let's take a look. We're going to go into the Bible, and there's this guy named Paul who writes a letter to a church in a city called Colossae, and it's the book of Colossians, and he's telling the, the church in Colossae about Jesus. And he says this about Jesus. The Son, the Son is Jesus, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in him, so that in everything, he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. And here's the, the, the key part. And through him and through Jesus, God desired to reconcile to himself all things. All things, whether are things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So what this is saying is that Jesus, who is God, created all things, holds all things together, and all things were created to glorify him, and that he is the only one who has ever been raised from the dead. He's the firstborn among the dead. So why was he raised from the dead? Well, the Bible talks a lot about this, and there's many reasons, and they're all true, but the, the, the thing that this verse highlights is that he was the firstborn among the dead. He was raised from the dead so that he might have supremacy, so that he might be sovereign over all, that nothing would be above him, nothing would be beyond him, and that through what he did on the cross, God would enact a plan to bring all things under him. And that word later on where they say reconcile, to reconcile all things to him through the blood of the cross is so important because it implies that there's something wrong that needs to be made right. And you know, it's funny because we can look around at our world, especially now, and clearly see that not everything's reconciled to Jesus. There are things in this world that are actively against the God of Scripture. But that's not what this passage is saying. <coughs> it's not saying that everything is perfect. But it's saying that through what Jesus did on the cross, dying for the sins of the world, that, that act, that action, enacted a plan that will come to fruition, and that will bring purpose to every bump in the road, to every turbulent season we will experience, and ultimately, we will get to our destination. That ultimately, Jesus will take every bad thing, every wind that would cause us to go off course, and he will use it to, to, to get us to where we need to go. It will not detract from our final landing point. What is that point? What is that destination? Well, the book of Revelation, the final book in the Bible says this, and Revelation 21, 4, that we'll get to a place eventually where he, he being Jesus, will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Ultimately, Jesus is bringing us to a place where there will be no more tears. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain. Everything that is old and temporary will pass away. It is in this truth that we can find hope. It is in this truth we can find peace, knowing that one day every bad thing, every evil thing of this world will truly be no more, and we will be with Jesus forever, and that all things will be reconciled to him. So what does this mean for you and me? Does this mean we sit around and twiddle our thumbs and, and wait for Jesus to come back and just ignore everything bad that's going on in this world? No. You see, we actually have a job as Christ followers here and now, and it's, in, it's these two things. It's, it's a lot of things, but we're going to focus on two. One, pursue peace. Pursue peace. No matter what happens, when we seek God, we can find peace. We can find peace through his promise that he will reconcile himself to, or that he will reconcile us to himself. And we, and we need to have an active relationship with God in order to find this kind of peace. 
We need to stay connected to Him through praying, reading our Bible, staying plugged into community with other believers, which is why it's so important for you to meet with your small group virtually over these next few weeks, and also through serving others. We can pursue peace by doing that. You know, speaking of serving others, that brings us to our second thing. We need to proclaim His promise to the world. When Jesus was with his disciples, before he, he left them forever, he said, go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. What's a disciple? A disciple is just someone who knows and follows Jesus. And he says to go make them, to go tell them about me. We're called to go into this world and proclaim that even when everything in this world is, is falling apart, that God is still good, that God still loves this world, that he died for you and he died for your friends, and that he wants to live forever with us. We're called to proclaim that while we experience pain in this world, there's a new world, there's a new kingdom coming where there will be no more pain or suffering. We aren't called to hold on to this at all. We found it, and, and Jesus has given it to us, and we are called to share it. So the world is experiencing some turbulence right now. But I want you to know that no matter where you are, no matter the level of anxiety you're feeling or not, that we actually have a pilot who controls our destiny. We have a pilot who's in control, and our, secure, our, our, eternal, um, our eternity is secure with him. When we experience pain, when we experience stress and anxiety, for those of us who are in Christ, there's actually purpose to your pain. Nobody else can say that, but for those of you who are in Christ, there's purpose to your pain, eternal purpose. And he can take those things and use it to get us to where he wants us to go. God can use it to glorify him and to build you up to be stronger than you ever have been before. It actually says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good of those who love him. Jesus says in uh, John, uh, uh, the book of John, I'm not exactly sure what chapter, and I don't want to get it wrong, but he says, you can take heart. In this world, you will have trouble, but I've actually overcome the world. You will experience pain, but I am the only one who can give purpose to your pain. In the book of uh, Genesis, Joseph said to his brothers who had just betrayed him, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. Our God is a reconciling God who can take even a global pandemic and reconcile it to his purpose and use it for his good and for your benefit. So, as we wait, as we wait for the fulfillment of that promise of eternal life, let's pursue hope. Let's proclaim hope that it's coming and that we can have faith knowing that it's secure by seeking after a real relationship with God and being a light to a world that so desperately needs hope right now. As you go to small groups, I want to challenge you with this question. Where do you find your hope? Where is it? You might ask, how do I know where I'm finding my hope? Well, chances are where you find your hope is where you run to when things get tough. You know, if you're anything like me, when things get tough, you take this out. And you scroll and you numb yourself. But really that doesn't work because it doesn't numb you at all. It actually makes you feel worse because you're seeing all the news articles and all of those things, and maybe it's binging a show on Netflix, video games, maybe it's a, a serious addiction that you use to numb the pain. Some of those things are bad, some of those things aren't. Um, but where do we find our hope? So I know that this isn't going to give me hope. Jesus is the only one who gives me that and can give you that. So the most important part for you now is to identify where am I finding my hope that's not in Jesus and how can I redirect. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to go to small groups. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we love you and we declare and know that you are bigger than anything this world is going through right now. Uh, God, you're bigger than the coronavirus. You're bigger than the stock markets crashing. You're bigger than um, our job security. You're bigger than... Um, than the anxiety we might feel about school or, or any of that. God, those are all valid concerns, but in light of your sovereignty, we can know and pursue hope. It's accessible. We can find it. So God, I pray that you would be with us as we go to groups and as we have these discussions. God, that um, we would be vulnerable with the, each other. We'd be honest about the things we're scared about. Uh, but God, that we would move uh, one step closer to the hope that you have for us and that you want to give us freely. God, we love you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In your son's holy name, amen.
Hey guys, it's been such a pleasure to join with you virtually. We'll see you here next week. Have a great time in your small group.